No, oh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what. Here's the sitch. Uh, I went back into a previous save, and I accomplished everything that we had accomplished so far up to this point, but really, really quickly because I wanted to make it in before ten fifteen. I had forgotten uh, about the uh, the note that was in Pip Carter's notebook uh, regarding a meeting that Mister Carter was supposed to have with a Tut Smith in the Egyptian room, and there he is. There's Mister Tut Smith. That is. I gotta follow him because this is an old game. I gotta watch him go in. So uh, we gotta watch him waddle his turkey leg butt over there. And if I go too fast, I have to go back into the other room and he'll still be there. He'll still be in exactly the point <laughs> where he was before. Uh, I'm very interested to see what exactly Mr. Carter was supposed to... Oh, sorry. Mr. Smith was supposed to discuss with Mr. Cod. Uh, did I go in too fast? I went in too fast. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. I hope I didn't ruin it. Oh, good, no. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and now. Good evening, Dr. Smith. Miss Bo, I did not expect to see you here. I'm glad I made it. Ah, oh, but I knew you were coming. You did? How? How is not important. The question is, why are you here? I had an appointment with Dr. Carter. You must be aware that he's dead. Dead? Why, I had no idea. Died right here in this room, as a matter of fact. I'm surprised you hadn't heard. I'm shocked. I don't know what to say. I bet you don't. Where were you at 8 p.m. when he died? At the party, of course. You saw me there. Actually, I didn't see you there at that time. But you must. Oh, well, there was the phone call. Phone call. Mr. Heimlich told me I had a call waiting on Dr. Carrington's telephone. When I arrived in his office, the line was dead. So I returned to the party. Was Dr. Carrington in his office? No, he was at the party. Did Mr. Heimlich tell you who was calling? No, he didn't take the call, and I don't know who told him about it. You and Dr. Carter seem to argue a lot about the dagger of Amon Ra. We had our differences of opinion, yes. Did you kill him? Miss Bo, I am shocked that you would ask me such a thing. I am leaving. Hmm, we'll talk again later. Hmm, indeed. Now that we've made it for there, how about we save over that and, uh, and say, yeah, hang on, made it for 10, 15. That, at, least we, at least now we can say... At least now we can save it in a spot where we have made the appointments we've needed to make so far. That's cool. Oh yeah, there's something else. There's something else. I got. We gotta. We gotta show this on footage. Hang on. If I can just cross over here, let's have another look at a that body. A peek into the mummy case reveals that Pippin's body has been removed. It's been moved, which is not entirely unsuspicious. I mean. It makes sense if you were to move a body after having discovered that it was this. Hmm, uh, let me let me start that sentence over. After you've discovered a body, chances are pretty good that you're going to want to maybe move it to a more secure and isolated location, but um, maybe not here. The faceplate on the armor is slightly open, as if something is protruding from the inside of the dark helm. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's Mr. Carter. Hang on. It's Dr. Pippin Carter, famous dead archaeologist. Yep, he was crammed into a suit of armor. I don't know why. Somebody's trying to hide the body. Dr. Carter's body has been indelicately crammed into the suit of armor. His filmy eyes gaze in mute shock. His head is bent at an unlikely angle and the skin is puckered where the helmet's edges bite into the expanding flesh. 
But why would you hide the body? I mean, nobody's leaving. Nobody's able to leave because Ernie, you know, has the keys. Ah, it's mysterious. Ah! Uh... <laughs> the lady didn't see fit to scream. <laughs> There is another murdered body right here. For God's sakes. The corpse is wearing a black tuxedo jacket. At the moment, it's a poor fit. Especially around the neck. Ugh. But... How ironic. After untold millions of years, this pterodactyl has claimed a new victim. A male specimen of Homo sapiens, which has been pinned to the floor by the pterodactyl's monstrous beak. Gosh. That... That's 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 elaborate. You want to kill a man. The corpse is wearing a black tuxedo jacket. At the moment it's a poor fit, especially around the neck. Yeah, it appears that there's no head. Look, a large pool of blood has formed around the corpse. It has barely begun to congeal, indicating that the incident must have taken place within the past few minutes. Hmm, okay, so perhaps while we were discussing things with Mr. Smith, Okay. The right hand of this unfortunate. Yeah, there's the nothing there. The left arm and hand is splayed out to the side. A quick glance reveals nothing grasped in the hand or up the sleeve. Hmm. How about the magnifying glass? What Your you got? careful observation reveals that this is a rented tuxedo bearing the marks of repeated alterations. There is a stain above one pocket. A whiff reveals the strong, fresh scent of champagne. Champagne. Your careful observation reveals. Uh, yes, we got you that. You find a large grease stain on the right sleeve. You give it a quick whiff and identify the scent of turkey hors d'oeuvres. Turkey. <laughs> Everybody was eating turkey tonight, you huh? Search the left arm. Empty-handed. Your yeah. careful observation. Okay. Can I look at the Upon head? Close and Can I? The blood has all both. Whoa! The sorry, did I miss that? Has begun to clot, darkening and thickening. It's difficult to judge whether or not this blood is primarily from the neck wound or the point where the pterodactyl's beak impaled the body. Hmm. Or both. Or both. Well, I don't think we're going to get much more out of this. Now we are 11.15. Somehow an entire hour has just passed. Uh, I remember this next part. I'm never going to be able to forget this next part. Where would you go if you had a head missing? Probably the uh, life mask exhibit. We do have a new addition over here. Where's her screaming? That's twice now she should have screamed. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, well, yeah, shit. It's fucking Ziggy. Oh no, that doesn't look like a life mask. He doesn't look like a life mask. Dead or not, it's a he. It's... 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 Ziggy's head! Mm-hmm. Poor Ziggy. The guy might have been a scumbag, but he didn't deserve this. Oh, no! Yeah, I got it, yeah. You reach out sadly towards Ziggy's severed head, then draw away. He's clearly beyond all help. Oh, quite far, yes. I you wonder... reach out sad... I wonder where all that blood went. It seems to me... Oh, Jesus. It seems to me there's a lot of blood in the head. What is going on in here? I'd say you've got some explaining to do, young lady. Why are you screaming? I found Mr. Ziggy's head. <laughs> Mr. Very odd how you are always finding the bodies, Miss Bo. I think we should be going back to my office and interrogating you now. He does have a good point. Here now, Wolf. The young lady just found a man's head. Give her a moment before you get out your thumb screws then. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. What a gentleman. Don't thank me, lass. I'm not saying you didn't kill the man. I'm just trying to restrain Mr. Heimlich's enthusiasm for his job. Jab. But I will get the results. Let me talk to her privately. Now I realize you're just trying to help, Wolf. But I think we can learn what we need from the lass without harming her. She could lie, and you'd never know it. You Americans are too soft on your criminals. I just walked in and found his head, that's all. Well, Mr. Heimlich does have his point, lass. It's a wee bit curious that you keep showing up at the murder scenes before anyone else. How do you explain that, then? I'm fast. Just lucky, I guess. 
Uh, could lucky too. Well, you do seem a wee bit small to be sawn off a man's head. I'll say that much. Hmm. Thanks. The Sprawline could have had help. Or maybe she's very clever. Yeah. Or maybe you're trying to pin the murders on her, so you can find the murderer and save your job, eh? Oh. My job is quite secure here, alrighty. Oh, really now? A security chief who allows burglars to steal the exhibits, then overlook several murders happening under his nose. I'd think twice about your security methods if I was running things here. Or maybe he did it. This is hardly the place to discuss my methods here, O'Reilly. We have a suspect to interrogate. Correction. We have a murder scene to investigate. We can talk to the last later when she's had a chance to calm down. Again. Thank you again, sir. You're a sturdy one. I'll say that much for you. One scream and you've got your head together again, so to speak. Uh, just don't try to leave the museum. Hmm. I can't leave. I'm locked in. Good. We won't have to worry about you then. <laughs> All right, Wolf. We've got work to do. Let's go get the crime scene tools. Oh. Poor Zig. I kind of liked him. But I'm really, I'm still suspicious about what it was doing here, though. I, um, I kind of want to go back to, uh, what's his name? Carrington's office. I think... I think uh, we might be able to listen in on another conversation. I mean, it's kind of on my way anyway because I want to go back to those, uh, to the uh, the preserv or the alcohol preservation vats because it's. You hear muffled? Oh, 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 it feels oh, oh. like it's part of the downs. Okay, okay. There's voices. I don't know if it's. I don't know if we've heard this one yet. Well, lass, we've known. Uh, we have heard this one sure. yet. Yeah. Man, you were down there, and then you were over here in a heartbeat? Jesus. <laughs> He's a fast man. It's as if there's secret paths in this place. Um, yes. Sorry. Well, now that... It, uh, okay. I'll bite. If she's leaving, is she in here? She isn't. Oh. Wait, whoa. Actually, hang on. Have a look at this. A paper cutter with a red blade. The paper cutter was used to cut Mr. Zig's head off. God. Hang on. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want this. The red stain on the paper cutter blade could be red ink or blood. Hmm. Perhaps the last person to use it had an accident? Gosh. Okay. So, hang on. Let's have a let's have a look at this. Rubbing okay. The charcoal over the we got to get everything. We got to get all of readable. our thoughts in a line. Yvette, 8 o'clock. Egyptian rum. Yes. Tut ten fifty. Okay, so, uh, okay, Pip was supposed to meet Yvette in the Egyptian room at eight. It was suggested that he died at eight. So, if it clearly wasn't Mr. Tut Smith, as we uh, seemed to have determined earlier on when he said that he was kind of shocked, uh, then that puts the blame or the the prime suspicion right on Yvette, the poor girl. Because she did have one of uh, one of the uh, there there was a um, what was it a high heeled shoe in blood right at the foot of the sarcophagus where we found the body. Uh, and the charcoal over the notepad. Carrington, his office at eleven. At this, it's eleven fifteen, isn't it? Let's see if he's still there. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yes. So um. Yes. Gee, um, so are, is the notebook just sort of like a reminder of how, when to kill people? <laughs> Good God. And there's, there's CP written right here in blood. CP. Oh, hang on. The glass on the clock face appears to have been smashed during a struggle. Whether it was a struggle to wind the clock or a struggle for Carrington's life. It's hard to say for certain. Hmm. Okay. CP. I can't remember what CP stands for. Maybe I'll think about it, though. Uh, like, I don't know. CP, CP. The clock know. appears to have been broken at exactly 12.04 a.m. Is it 12.04 a.m.? Dr. Carrington's head holds no clues that you can discover, except for the somewhat pained expression on his face. Huh. Okay, well... 
Can I uh, take Ouch. any of these? Those quills are sharp. They sure must be to go through a body like that. Don't touch. Yeah. Um. How about? Rigor mortis has not yet begun to set in, allowing the head to move slightly on the neck when you poke at it. Okay, so he really hasn't died recently, huh? Carrington or he did die recently. When he died, and his hair could have used a good wash to get all the grease out of it. Hmm. Neither the fingernails nor the fingers hold any clues. How about this the one? The fingernails hold no clues, but the right index finger has blood on the end of it, although there are no cuts evident on the hand. CP. Man, what you does that stand for? You presume the dripping blood belongs to Carrington, since the porcupine was stuffed. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else I can There's look at? There's blood on the porcupine quills. Right, right. From their position in his body, you infer that the blood belongs to Dr. Carrington. Mm. Mm hmm It's the dead body of Archibald Carrington III. From the position of the corpse, you suspect foul play. Yes. I'm guessing he didn't commit suicide doing, uh, doing this. Carrington drooled. Yeah. I feel like there's something else. Not really, huh? Uh, well, I'm not going to go bone something. No. Let me just, uh, I can't. Don't touch. I can't do anything with Rigor the porcupine. No. Rigor no. Don't touch. No. Don't touch. Okay, fine. We're done. Don't I touch guess. It. I guess. We're done. Okay. We are well past midnight now. Now there's, uh, we did a little bit of looking in, uh, no we didn't. The collected catalogs of the Smithsonian Museum. Yeah, we didn't take exactly look. the time to, look. uh. First it Look. To go First, into Mr. What's his name? Uh, Heimlich's office. That's downstairs. The collected works of Knut Hamsen, Norwegian novelist. His masterpiece, but we should. Growth of the Soil, won him the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1920. And for similar reasons, we should be doing the same thing here. A large format illustrated version of Crime and Punishment by Dostoyevsky. Yes. A police file in it, eh? There's a police file hidden in the book. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Yeah. There's a lot of these things that you really, really, really have to dig to find. And uh, let's have a look you at this. You read a police report on the criminal career of one Watney Little conman extraordinaire. Conman extraordinaire, huh? Ah. The file contains an amazing list of offenses, mostly fraud, conspiracy to commit fraud, and various degrees of larceny. Mm -hmm. Glancing at the top of the page, you noticed that the investigations were conducted by Scotland Yard. Mm -hmm. You also noticed that the last entry describes Little's recent escape from Dartmoor Prison. Mm -hmm. Clipped to the outside of the folder is a small handwritten note that reads simply, Remember our deal. Apparently, this file was provided in exchange for somebody's silence or service. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna leave There's another friggin' dead body in here. <laughs> Alright. This time, I'm gonna try it again. I wanna go down into Ernie's office. Or, we should at least go check out Heimlich's office, too, because uh, I don't think he's there. Heimlich is all over the place. He should be investigating, you know, Ziggy's body or something. There. Okay. So we're here now. We're going to pick up in the next episode right here where we left off. Thank you for joining us, folks. Do have a good one.